we do need a character. We're gonna do some shameless promotion here. We're gonna use character we have done for for the marketplace. Is this knight? Okay. So this knight, if we open it with Control E, and let me open this program so you can know what I'm what I'm typing. There is this Control E. It already have some movement inputs, gamepad inputs, move mouse inputs, touch inputs, and an attack. Do you want to review this, or or maybe it's? Yeah. <laughs> I think we we can a little bit. Well, this is how how it's it's looking right now. We have this attack. So every time you open a blueprint that you have not made, what you should look for first. And I'm sorry if there if you hear some construction background there. Yeah. I can't do anything about that, but hopefully it keeps interest keeps it interesting. So if you're awake. Yeah. <laughs> so in any new blueprint, you should always look to the viewport. The viewport is how the blueprint will look. Any blueprint is just a container of components. Here in the component tab, you will see every component that it's is making this blueprint right so we have a capsule component used for collisions in character an arrow component used for, to know the the direction of the character and a skeletal mesh this is the the polygons the mesh that has all the information of on how the character looks and also has the bone hierarchy of the character so this can be animated, we can move the bones, and the bones influence the mesh. So that's how, if I move the arm bone, then also the mesh moves with it. Then, what what do we have also? We have this static mesh that represents this great sword is being attached because here in the components we have uh, also like um, if you have used 3ds Max or Blender, you probably have seen this type of parenting. This type of, type of parenting means that if I move this mesh, then whatever it's beneath it will move will move with it too. If I were to remove it by dropping dropping it in the parent here, drop here to detach, then if I move the character then the sword will stay in place. But that's not what I want. This is static mesh great sword also is being attached to the parent to a socket. A socket that we have made inside the skeleton of the of this character. And we also have a spring arm and a camera which is pretty common to do for characters. We use a spring arm because this spring arm has the ability to do some collision testing and this makes it easy if whenever uh, our camera and I'm gonna show it right here I'm gonna add a cube and this cube uh, I'm gonna put it there if my camera starts overlapping then it does that collision test so we are not um, passing through walls or other characters, whatever, whatever object says that it's blocking the camera, the camera channel, then it will do that collision test really easy and without having to do a lot of code. So yeah, those are the components that have something that we can see in the viewport. But because this is a character, we also have a character movement component. This is a component that has some properties here, like gravity scale, max acceleration. This comes with the engine. Epic uh, created this component because it's really common for for biped characters to to walk around, to run. We have walking, jumping, falling, uh, swimming, and this component di dictates how the input we are passing it uh, will be consumed. So. Having this in mind, we can now go to, let's check 
if there is something in the construction script, there isn't. And here we have the, the input code that supports all the movement and the attacks. Just to not get off topic really easily, like it always happens, these in movement inputs will consume uh, inputs. The way they do this is through the add movement input. This node will take in mind the inputs where we are passing to, to this character. And this consumption will be seen by this character movement component. And this component will be the one that moves it forward. This is why we don't have any code here that sets the location. Right? We don't do set actor location. This type of yeah, node. That, yeah. Uh, that reminds me when I was trying blueprints. Uh, I was doing some platforms, and in order to move them, I add the component like interp movement. This mm -hmm. is kind of similar, but this is like made for characters, right? <laughs> was, uh... Yeah. 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 Um enough or not really it's really similar uh, the difference is usually those interp uh, components are acting on top of actors in our case this is a character which is also a pound and uh, we can have a class on how the gameplay framework works but just to keep it really simple uh, and here the mighty tablet will will help me an actor will be anything that can be put into into the level, right? So we have a cube here. This cube can be put into a level, and anything I want in the level will be an actor. So, for example, this is an actor, this is an actor, this player start is also an actor, this reflection is also an actor, the lights also are actors. Whenever we need an actor that can support giving it inputs, if we want this, um, uh, how do I select here? There it is. If we, if we want this cube to uh, work, uh, this, this is not it. If we want it to work as a, um, as a character, maybe your character is a little cube that moves around. And we have like an input, let's call it uh, a joystick. Then did you just need a perfect cube? <laughs> this whiteboard does stuff. Yeah. So here, whenever I want it to go forward and I want this this cube to move forward with my input, this is a subclass of an actor that is called a pawn. So a pawn is an actor that can support inputs. And it will work for characters that are controlled by the player, and it will work for um, AI that can send send, send commands to this uh, cube, right? Uh, subclass of the pawn is the character. And this character is the same as the pawn because it supports uh, input from a player or for, a, or for AI, but also adds the functionality of uh, walking movement and everything else so in, in pounds will be pretty common to see the set actor location whenever we consume the input we will use also these nodes if you see the target here is a pound but uh, for a pound you should create a, a like a component that will do the action movement in order to be more clean so this is why by using these inputs and we should also, oh, we will talk about inputs uh, for the targeting part. So there is no, no rush here. In the inputs we set up whenever we want an axis, what's the value of those, if, of the axis, right? Because if the joystick is like tilted a little forward, it will not be a one, a value of one. Maybe it could be 0 0.2. So the scale value is reduced. And we need a, a direction. In this case, we are getting the control ro the rotation. This control rotation is, is the rotation of my player controller. My player controller, in this case, 
will be the, the where the camera is looking. So if I'm looking that way, if I press the forward button, it will go to where my camera is looking. And this is being done because we only need that jaw. The jaw value would be um, like, it would be this value, like on the horizontal plane, where are we looking? We really don't need to keep in mind, like if we're looking up or, or, or down of we, if we're tilting our head, like sideways, we, we don't need that because we, our movement is not of, of uh, something that is flying because it's a character. We, we probably just need to move in the, uh, in one, in two axes and where we can jump also, right? But this character doesn't have jump. I just remember that we didn't add jump to this character. <laughs> so that is why in, here in the code, we are removing all the noise. We just need the, the jaw. And then with this direction, we are getting the forward vector and the right vector. Whenever we have a vector or, or a direction, we can get, uh, it's like very easy to visualize in the forward because if our direction is this way, our forward, forward vector will be also in this way. But our right vector will be something that goes to the right. And this should make like a 90 degree angle. So it, it works because we want to go forward, then we use this vector. We want to go right, we use the, the perpendicular vector. And that's the gist of it. Uh, here, uh, this is for gamepad. The mouse just add a controller your input because turning will be from left. Uh, let me let me put this in new editor window. And turning it will be left from right, and looking up, looking down will be the pitch because this is the pitch. We do not have roll. Roll usually doesn't feel that good in third person uh, characters. Uh, for some shooter, we they do add some role in the camera, like w whenever the 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 character is speaking and only moving the head. The, there, you can add some role to it. But for us, it really didn't didn't matter. Also, we have an input action and attack. You can see that there are input actions and input axes because the axis axis will return a value between minus. Well, uh, it really can be any value. Usually it's between minus one and one. And this will fire every time. Updating the value, even if the value is zero, then it will fire. The input action, on the other hand, will only fire when it's pressed or when it's released. And it's used for actions. Like the name says, like, if I want to attack, that's an action. If I want to jump, I won't probably need for it, need it for it to uh, fire every time, right? So whenever I attack, I press a button for attack. And then what I'm doing here is, what am I doing here? Uh, I'm checking if the anime instance is implementing an, an interface and then I'm sending an attack action. It's done this way and interface is an, another, another whole talk, topic we can uh, some sometime in the future check. Uh, but what I'm saying is that this class, that anime instance is the, yeah. I think I was mute. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just said before that the, the move forward and the move right made a lot of sense since when you draw the arrows. I'd never understood that part. And I was also asking, well, what is an interface? But you just said like, it's just another whole topic. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy because Unreal gives you like this code already. It's pretty easy to just assume it works by magic and never try to to ask why. And yeah, that's that's why. And right. like the basics of any interface, it's just a way to declare um, functionality without even implementing it. For example, if I open this file that is called BPI inputs, I can open it qu quickly by pressing Ctrl P, um, just type in the name inputs, 
we have function here and this function does not have an if we see the nodes it doesn't have any what this allows us to do uh, is to declare the implementation of this function when wherever we want so in this case we are asking the anim instance the anim instance if we press on the me on the character mesh the skeleton mesh here we have the anim class that is the blueprint character the character blueprint so this character blueprint is just a class but whenever we press play we are not using the class we're using an instance of that class so we get the anim instance and let me open that character blueprint i'm going to search it i have it right here double click it here we have event press attack input and it's called exactly the same uh, in order for us to use it um, we could also we need to implement like declare that we will use this interface we do that by going to the class settings and here implemented interface we can add any interface we want in this case our inputs and here in the inputs we can see a uh, press attack input then in my blueprint character in my character blueprint i can right click it and it will be well press attack input we can call the function if we need to play it or call it well but if we want to implement it we can add the event and now we have it here if we don't remember how it, it's called then here in interfaces we have all the functions that interface is uh, declaring so we can right click it implement event and we will have it again great and well this this interface just ask if if there is any montage playing and we play them attack montage that well is just an animation attack with the trade so let me close that that's the basic setup of the character uh, we are using interface here just to spice it up because this will mean that if you create another character blueprint you don't need to cast it here we're not doing any types of cast so we are keeping it clean and by keeping it clean i'm <laughs> If we open the, the size map, here we only have the skeleton. Oh, well, to explain a little bit about this. This is a map of every asset this blueprint is using. And if you don't want to use that shortcut, you can also click asset size map. And here we can see all the references to other objects it has. We have, without these um, assets, this blueprint couldn't exist. We are using a skeletal mesh, we are using a static mesh for the sword and an animation blueprint because we have defined it. So basically never delete files in game development. <laughs> so... Especially if it's being referenced somewhere. It, it, it should. Yeah. I mean, if it's not having a reference with anything, then why is it in the content browser anyway? <laughs> And the last part of the character is just enabling some physics for the we just give them a bone name and add some physics to them the side word so whenever we move we have some some collisions some, some physics in the armor 